Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about polar coordinates. So what is polar coordinates and what is its connection with the Cartesian coordinates that we use, the x and y? So let's look at the graph. Suppose we have a point P and the vertical length is y, whereas the horizontal length is x. And that is the Cartesian coordinate. However, there is another way to represent this point, which is the polar coordinate represented by r and theta. So r is the length of the point from the origin, whereas the theta is the angle between the x-axis and the line of the r. So with simple trigonometry calculation, we know that x equals to r cos theta, y equals to r sine theta, r equals to the square root of x squared plus y squared with Pythagoras theorem, and tangent theta equals to y over x. So by remembering these four identities, we can convert any Cartesian coordinate into polar coordinates. For example, we want to find the equation of the curve x squared plus y squared equals to 2x, and so first of all, we will substitute x equals to r cos theta and y equals to r sine theta into the equation, and we have r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals to 2r cos theta. Factorizing out the r squared, we got cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is equals to 1. So next we cancel out r on both sides, and we got r equals to 2 cos theta as a representation of the Cartesian equation that we have above, using the polar coordinates. So the polar equation of the given curve is r equals to 2 cos theta. We can also plot this curve. So r equals to 2 cos theta is a circle on the x-axis with the diameter of 2 units. We'll look into more details later. Alright, now each polar equation has its own unique type of curve. So I will be drawing out each one of them. So pay attention to how they look like and remember how to draw them because you will be asked in the exam to sketch all the curve out when necessary.
So let's look at an example. In the exam, it asks you to sketch r equals to a cos 3 theta. So we plug in each theta values, like the test values, that you get a specific r values. So once we have recorded them down by plugging them into your calculator, then you have a series of r. Also, remember that the theta rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. Let's now try some other theta values. For example, we have 2 pi over 9, and if we plug in into our calculator, our r will be equal to negative half a. Therefore, since r must always be positive, the curve does not exist when theta equals to 2 pi over 9. Similarly, the curve does not exist from any value of theta between pi over 6 and pi over 2, 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, finally 13 pi over 6 and 15 pi over 6. So plotting the values given in the table and joining the points together give a curve with three loops or loops. And you also have to notice that the lines theta equals to pi over 6, theta equals to pi over 2, and theta equals to 5 pi over 6, where the r are all 0, are actually the tangents to the loops. So the tangents meet at the origin or the pole, and all three loops are congruent. So if you sketch out the graph based on the table, you obtain the three loops, which resembles the one that I've drawn just now. Then we add some details into the graph. For example, the three tangent shear lines to the curve. We show the theta equals to pi over two, theta equals to pi over six, and theta equals to five pi over six. And that's all. All right, now we'll be sketching two more graphs. The first one is a secant theta, and the second one is a secant alpha minus theta. So let's look at the first one first. We know that r equals to a secant theta, and it is also equals to a over cos theta. And when we arrange the equation, we obtain r cos theta equals a, and we know that r cos theta is x, so the curve is x equals to a. So we'll be drawing out a straight line on the graph. And then for the second graph, we will be using some trigonometric identity. We know that cos alpha minus theta equals to cos theta cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha. So expanding it, we obtain r cos theta cos alpha plus r sine theta sine alpha equals to a. And then r cos theta equals to x, while r sine theta equals to y. So replacing them, we obtain x cos alpha plus y sine alpha equals to a. And we know that from this curve, rearranging them into y equals to mx plus c, we obtain a straight line where the x-intercept is a secant alpha, while the y-intercept is a cosecant alpha. Next, we'll be looking at how to find the area of a sector of a curve using polar coordinates or polar equation. So the general equation for the area of a sector of a curve is a equals to half times the integrate of r squared d theta. And the boundaries are between the radii theta equals to alpha and theta equals to beta since we are integrating with respect to d theta. Now let's look at an example. It wants us to find the area of one loop of the curve r equals to a cos 3 theta and we have drawn out the curve in a previous example. So the area of one loop, only one loop since it has got three loops, so we need to find the boundary of this one loop. 
and we immediately know from the previous example that the first loop is bounded between the lines theta equals to pi over 6 and theta equals to negative pi over 6. Okay, so the area equals to half times the integrate of r squared d theta and we know that the boundary is negative pi over 6 and pi over 6. So we just plug in the values into the boundaries and after that we substitute r with a cos 3 theta and we can rewrite this equation as a equals to half times the integrate of a squared cos squared 3 theta d theta. Using the double angle formula to integrate, we have a equals to half a squared times integration of half times cos 6 theta plus 1 d theta. Then, we simplify it to become a squared over 4 times sine 6 theta over 6 plus theta with the boundaries stated there, pi over 6 and negative pi over 6. And finally, we substitute the theta with the boundaries and we obtain the area as a squared times pi over 12. And that is the area of one loop of the equation. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genie has got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie will see you next time. Bye bye.